This has been an active time as there have been several performance leaks for Alder Lake. From those leaks, several sites and outlets are declaring Intel will take back the crown from AMD. Is this real and should you be excited? Let's get into it. There have been several leaks on Intel's new Alder Lake CPUs that will be launching in November. I have seen each of the leaks reported and everyone declares Intel the new king. Individually, you could think that any one of these leaks could be fake. However, we are seeing multiple types of benchmarks from several different sources, and if you look at them together, they are starting to paint a picture of what we can expect to see when Alder Lake launches. We have the leak from the CPU-Z benchmark, the Sandra benchmark, a Geekbench score, a Cinebench scores in both R20 and R23, and then finally a gaming benchmark. Let's quickly review the leaks and start with the CPU-Z single core performance. First, we had a leak of Alder Lake running at 4.6 GHz and the single core score was 785.6. Then we have a leak from Billy Billy where we have a score of 825, which is 5% higher. Since we know the i9-12900K will have a single core turbo speeds over 5 GHz, then this score is plausible. This is significant because the single core speed of Intel's 11th gen i9-11900K in Rocket Lake is 682. That means Alder Lake is 21% higher in single core performance. Also, the screenshot shows the multi-core bar, but they blurred out the score. However, you can see that the blue bar is similar to the magenta bar in the Ryzen 9 5950X, meaning their multi-core scores are very similar. Next, we have the Sonder benchmark that was published and taken down, but not before video cards was able to capture the charts. While they are only a snippet of the data, it shows that outside of the cryptography scores, Alder Lake is not significantly different from Rocket Lake and Alder Lake will not support AVX 512. Yes, it's in the silicon, however, Intel turned that feature off for unknown reasons. I then searched the Sondra database and I did find a score of an i9-12900 non-K CPU and the single core score was 214. As a comparison, the 11th gen i9-11900 non-K scored 184. If we assume the single core turbo speeds will be the same, then Alder Lake is 16% higher. In multi-core, Alder Lake scored 2510, while Rocket Lake was 1770. So we see Alder Lake with a 41% improvement. Then we have the Geekbench scores that can be found in a database where the single core speeds are up to 1893. Compared to Rocket Lake at 1856, that is just 2% higher, and that does not seem to be much of an improvement. However, in the multi-core score, Alder Lake scored 17,299, while Rocket Lake was just at 11,010. So Alder Lake provides for a 57% improvement. Let's move on to the series of Cinebench leaks. Let's start with the single core first. The leaker blocked out the multi-core score and also the last digit from the single core score. If we assume the last digit is zero, then we can see Cinebench R20, the score is 810. To put that into perspective, Rocket Lake scores 625, which means Alder Lake is 30% higher. The leak for the Cinebench R23 has a single core score of 2050. For comparison, Rocket Lake scores 1683, which means Alder Lake is 22% higher. Now let's look at the Cinebench multi-core score. In Cinebench R23, Alder Lake scored a whopping 30,549, while Rocket Lake is at 16,204. That puts Alder Lake 88% higher, which is stunning to think that the more powerful big cores, in addition to those eight little cores, can help boost multi-core to almost twice the performance. Finally, we have a benchmark score in Ashes of the Singularity. And while the score is higher, it really isn't a good indicator of general gaming performance. Who remembers last year when Rocket Lake scores were leaked for Ashes of the Singularity? Remember, Rocket Lake was faster than Ryzen 9 and thus Rocket Lake was going to retake the gaming crown. Except it didn't. I don't pay much attention to the Ashes benchmarks at this point. Let's summarize in a table starting with single core performance. The improvement in single core performance is showing a 21% better performance in CPU-Z, 16% better performance in the Sandra benchmark, no significant change in Geekbench, 30% better in Cinebench R20, and 22% better in R23. Overall, it is reasonable to expect Alder Lake's single core performance to be 15-25% to better than Rocket Lake, 
and that corresponds closely with Intel's own claim of an average IPC improvement of 19%. Now let's look at the summary of multi-core performance. Aldo Lake is showing 81% better performance in CPU-Z, 41% better in Sandra Benchmark, 57% better in Geekbench, 94% better in Cinebench R20, and 88% better in R23. In this table, we see gains as low as 40% and as high as 90% better than Rocket Lake. These large variations are a point of concern and sends up the first red flag I have in this hybrid architecture consisting of both big cores and little cores. Traditionally, we are used to simple scaling with cores. However, with big little, it appears that the little cores can really help in certain tasks like rendering in Cinebench, but their performance may not scale that well in other tasks. This will be an area I will be tracking to see if these little cores are more specialized or more suited in certain tasks when compared to the big cores. I think this will be one of the key differences from what we are used to seeing in the past. By the way, if you like content like this, hit that like button and consider subscribing and let me know in the comments below if you are looking forward to Aldo Lake for better gaming performance or for better productivity performance. What is difficult to understand is what is Intel offering us? Some people don't understand it and they see these leaked benchmarks and they just say that Intel is going to win. Well, I'm not so certain. Intel's proposition here is that they believe they can provide you more computing power and a better balance with power consumption by substituting four little cores with no hyperthreading within the same area as one big core that is hyperthreaded. If we look specifically at the i9-12900K, they are putting in two sets of four little cores in the space of two big cores. That is eight little cores with no hyperthreading, replacing two big cores with hyperthreading. Sounds like a winner, right? Well, the closest analogy to Intel's hybrid architecture is Apple's M1 chip. As someone who has been using Apple's big little CPU in the M1 since last December, I have spent a considerable amount of time with this type of architecture, and it gives me a unique perspective on what's good and what's not so good about the split of big and little cores. Also, if you look only at Intel's previous generation of CPUs, then maybe this new hybrid architecture does provide them a way to scale bigger beyond what they did in their previous generations by just adding more big cores. However, they are competing with Ryzen, and Ryzen is offering you big cores all around with up to 16 big hyper-threaded cores in the Ryzen 9 5950X. So in the end, there are two things I really want to know. Will this hybrid architecture have this large variation in performance depending on the application? And will this hybrid architecture have a significant impact to improving gaming performance? I'll use some of the techniques I used in the past when I predicted the scores of Rocket Lake to show what is possible and can it really achieve those performance gains? And what is the one Achilles heel that could really hinder Alder Lake from improving gaming performance? And we'll cover that next time. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.